dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Cassidy Strickland. Today is Sunday, November 13th. Let's check in with meteorologist Arden Gregory for a look at your forecast this morning. Well, if you're getting ready to head out and about, you might want to go out and start up your car because there was so much frost on mine this morning. Yeah, I think a lot of people might be kind of surprised by that. We did have the freeze warning that's still in effect right now. It is very cold and many of you will see frost as you head out your door this morning. We also have another dry day ahead of us today. In addition to the chilliness, as we take a look at our drought monitor, you can see much of eastern Kentucky is under a severe drought right now and Pinpoint Doppler for yet another day showing those clean sweeps as we scan the skies. We desperately need some rain, but we are not going to get any today. Temperature wise, as Cassidy mentioned, a cold one out there with temperatures starting out in the upper 20s to low 30s this morning. And we do have that freeze warning that will expire in a couple hours here at 10 o'clock this morning. So as you're headed out the door, definitely grab that coat. Maybe give yourself a little extra time to scrape off the windshield because lots of you will see frost this morning as we head into the afternoon hours. Another sunny and dry day with temperatures right around 60 degrees. And there's plenty more dry weather in the forecast. I'll have the details on that coming up a little later. All right, thank you, Arden. And with no rain in the forecast, forestry officials are afraid that forest fires could continue well into next week. Nearly 20 uncontrolled fires remain across southeastern Kentucky. And with the start of hunting season, forestry officials told me it's important to use caution and remain vigilant to avoid fires. Deer season meets forest fire season. If you're heading into the woods to hunt, forestry officials say to use caution. The main thing would be this weekend, we have a, you know excess of people in the woods because of this the opening of modern gun season, just being careful with cigarettes, things of that nature, um, because the more people that are in the woods, the more opportunities there are to start a fire. They say properly disposing of your cigarettes can make a huge difference. And if you're a cigarette smoker, please be extra careful with your cigarette butts. One idea is to take your, take your butts, drown them in a bottle of water, and this ensures that we don't have any fires that are started because of cigarette smoking. Right now, several fires continue to burn in Harlan County, most of them set deliberately. Everything to my knowledge we've worked has been arson with the exception of possibly one that was uh, a debris fire. With consistent dry weather, forestry officials say they aren't sure when burning will be allowed again. One of the questions we have had from the public is, can they burn in open barrels? And that is against the law right now. That's considered open burning. They say just one spark could start a large wildfire. Right now, nearly 70 counties have burn bans in Kentucky. If you see someone burning outdoors, call police immediately. Well, after two, nearly two weeks, an escaped inmate is back behind bars. Melvin Scott Garland and Justin Arnett climbed through the ceiling of their cell at the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center and managed to get to the roof to escape. That was on November 1st, and four days later, Garland turned himself in to the Clay County Detention Center. Yesterday morning, Manchester police arrested Arnett while responding to a domestic disturbance call. While Garland was taken back to the Big Sandy, Arnett is now in the Clay County Detention Center. While well, friends and family are preparing to say goodbye to three people killed in a Bell County crash last week. The crash happened Monday afternoon on U.S. 25 East. Brian and Kendra Redmond of Millsboro died in the wreck along with their four-year-old daughter, Kelsey. Family members will say their final goodbyes at the funeral service for all three this afternoon at 2 at Green Hills Funeral Home in Middlesboro. Well, Campbell County, Tennessee Sheriff's deputies are investigating after someone found human remains Friday near Norris Lake. Investigators say there is a possibility the remains could be that of 47-year-old Starla Pride who went missing in September. Family members told investigators she had a history of leaving her home in Campbell County unannounced, but that she would usually return within a few hours. Authorities sent the remains to the Regional Forensic Center in Knox County, Tennessee to be identified. Well, an elderly man is safe after a Wise County Sheriff's deputy and, canine, and his canine, Dixie, found him Friday in the Powell County Valley area of Big Stone Gap. They say he walked away from his home and could not be found. Within minutes of starting the track, the canine team found the man and brought him back home. 
Well, people across the nation are honoring veterans this weekend for their service and sacrifice. While Friday marked the national holiday, people in Laurel County took the time yesterday afternoon to honor veterans. District 5 of the Disabled American Veterans held a memorial service yesterday. They paid their respects to family and friend member, fam, friends and family members rather, who died within the past year. Those who died and served in District 5's Honor Guard had their names printed along the DAV van. Organizers say it is important to honor those who fought and those who continue to fight for our freedom. Every veteran in the United States, regardless of when they served, which war they were in, which unit they were in, which branch of service they were in, is bonded to the other veterans. Their families, if they need help, they're, we're here to help them. We are told the district is looking for more Honor Guard members who would help with various events. If you are interested in joining, you can head to our website, wymt.com. Well, here in Perry County, the Eastern Kentucky Veterans Center held a car show yesterday afternoon. Organizers sent us this photo. They say nearly 90 cars and their drivers came out for the event, raising more than $4,000 for the Veterans Program Fund. Organizers say that money is solely for the veterans at the center to purchase things such, such as dentures and glasses and take them on various outings. Well, November marks the start of the holiday season, and if you're like me, many of you will try to get a head start on your Christmas shopping. Well, for the past two days, local artists set up shop at the Perry County Park. It was all part of the 13th annual Art of the Mountains Christmas at the Cabin Artists and Craft Sale. Vendors showcased everything from embroidery to books, coffee, and more. The hope is you will shop local when looking for that perfect gift. You don't buy this stuff in the stores. If you want something for Christmas, it's all local made. It's all handmade. The craft sale wrapped up last night, but we put a link to the Art of the Mountains Facebook page on our website so you can check out the vendors there. Kids in Pulaski, Wayne, and Casey counties got an early Christmas present yesterday. More than 1,000 bikes were handed out for free from the Keeping It Moving organization. The organization is in memory of Stephen Ping, who died in June of 2012. We are told Ping always loved kids and giving, and the kids who received those bikes couldn't have been happier. We have had some really awesome reactions, some stories that are amazing. Uh, but yeah, the kids, we, we've had kids that actually were shaken, that they were so excited to get a bicycle. Organizers plan on having the event again. If you are interested, you must fill out a form ahead of time. Bikes are not handed out the day of. You can call 606-219-2540 for more information. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, thousands of people hit the streets across the country in a fourth day of protests against President-elect Donald Trump. And ahead in sports, the number two ranked LMU rail splitters go for their second win of the season. We go down to Greenville, Tennessee to show you the highlights. In between the freeze warning, forest fires, and a supermoon, weather is playing a big role in eastern Kentucky this weekend. Stay with us. I'll have your full forecast when we come back. Pikeville Medical Center proudly welcomes Dr. Tiffany Thompson, obstetrician gynecologist. A native of Hindman, Dr. Thompson graduated from Knott County Central High School and the University of Pikeville Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine. She offers comprehensive women's services ranging from prenatal care to advanced gynecological procedures. Dr. Thompson is located on the seventh floor of the PMC Clinic building. For appointments, call 606-218-2207. PMC, Mayo Clinic Care Network member. U.S. News & World Report recognizes Hazard ARH as a high-performing hospital. From the groundbreaking open heart program, advanced cardiac care, and numerous partnerships to the cancer center expansion, Hazard ARH, providing quality health care close to home. You may never need an attorney, but if you do, you should be prepared. Tune in to Simply the Law with Gary C. Johnson, Tuesday nights, 7 o'clock on WYMT. People's Bank and Trust of Hazard is strongly committed to our community's development, investing in a wide range of business and local organizations. You need the support of a local bank that is looking for ways to help you succeed. That's what People's Bank and Trust is all about. They always have your best interest at heart. People's Bank and Trust of Hazard, strongly committed to our community. 
Member FDIC. Are you using social media to drive traffic to your business? Do you know what is being said about your business in your local community? Join the conversation. Your business can have a powerful presence on all of the world's top social networking sites with the power of Local X. Local X is a full service digital agency dedicated to local business. Together, we will maximize the growth of your organization in your community. Local X, your local digital marketing experts. Go online at localxmarketing.com. Sky Alert Weather, dedicated to Eastern Kentucky. WYMT Mountain News, dedicated to Eastern Kentucky. Well, good morning and thank you for waking up with us. You know, I was down in Harlan County yesterday and I was just amazed at the amount of forest fires they have. I mean, we could really use some rain. Oh, definitely. We haven't had anywhere near as much rain as we normally do this season. We are in serious need of some. As you take a look at the drought monitor showing Kentucky here, we most of eastern Kentucky is under a severe drought at this time, the rest of us under a moderate drought. So we desperately need some rain, but pinpoint Doppler showing another day of those clean sweeps over eastern Kentucky. No rain in sight today, but we are off to a rather cold start this morning with temperatures ranging from the upper 20s into the low to even mid 30s across eastern Kentucky and we do have a freeze warning that will expire at 10 o'clock this morning that encompasses all of eastern Kentucky that will expire here in a couple hours at 10. So as you're headed out the door this morning definitely want to grab that coat because we are off to a very chilly start and maybe give yourself a little extra time to scrape the frost off the windshield. I know many folks have had to do that already this morning, but as we go through the rest of your day, plenty of sunshine on tap with temperatures topping out right around 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and break that down for you. Clear skies this morning and that will remain the case as we head through into the afternoon hours. Temperatures topping out in the upper 50s to right around 60. Then as we head into the evening and through the overnight hours, keeping with those clear skies and our temperatures not quite as cold as this morning, are expected to stay above freezing as we go through the overnight hours and start your day on Monday. Now all this clear weather, the bad news about that is our forest fire threat does still remain very high over eastern Kentucky. So make sure that you are obeying all of those burn bans. Do not burn anything outside right now as it could spread very easily. But the good news about this clear weather is that it gives us some nice viewing for the supermoon. Tonight and tomorrow night will be the best two best nights for viewing the supermoon. It is the closest moon we've had since 1948 and it will be 14% bigger and about 30% brighter than a normal full moon. So make sure you get out and take a look at that. As far as the rest of the week is concerned, very seasonable through midweek with those temperatures in the upper 50s to low 60s. We'll see a few more clouds Tuesday and Wednesday as a front moves through eastern Kentucky, but that is expected to stay dry. As we head into the second half of the week, we'll see temperatures warm up, topping out in the mid 60s for your Thursday, upper 60s for your Friday. As we go through the day on Friday, we will see the clouds increase as a cold front approaches eastern Kentucky. And then as that moves through on Saturday, we are finally going to get a shot at some rain. So let's hope that that is a good soaking rain that will help with some of these forest fires. The bad news is it's almost a full week of way, so we still have plenty of dry weather between now and then. So we definitely want to remind people to remain vigilant when pre uh, preventing these wildfires because, like you said, we still probably have more than about absolutely a week. yeah we're we're trying to keep any more of these from starting they have enough to fight as it is definitely take the proper precautions all right well thank you so much arden coming up we'll take a look at sports with jamie mccracken Bring your eyeglass prescription to Family Eye Care for top quality lenses and designer frames you won't find at the big box store. Family Eye Care, not just another pretty frame. For 25 years, you've made Appalachian Wireless what it is today. And as a thank you, we're giving you something unprecedented. More, More data. data. All mix and match and Advantage Plan subscribers have had their data packages automatically increased significantly, permanently, for no extra charge. To see just how much data you got, stop by a store, call customer service, or visit our website for more information. Just another example of better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. 
Watch the Hutch Chrysler Auto Show Thursday night at 7, right here on WYMT and WYMT.com. Your website is a direct reflection of your business. Create a dynamic and responsive website with the power of Local X. Local X is a full service, national quality level digital agency dedicated to local business. Together, we will maximize the growth of your organization in your community. Contact a local expert and get started today. Local X, your local digital marketing experts. Go online at localxmarketing.com. It's the most natural thing for me to dance, but I was chipping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. Looking for a quick, healthy dinner idea? Eat at Mom's Every Day. Get the recipe of the day, budget with $10 or less meal ideas, and we even have ideas for the picky eaters in your family. The app is free. Just search for Mom's Every Day in the App Store or Google Play Store. Sports, sponsored by Appalachian Wireless. Better service, bigger savings. This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. Good morning to the football cats trying to end a winning drought in Knoxville Saturday. Kentucky has not won a game against Tennessee at Tennessee since 1984. Let's go to a sunny Knoxville. The state troops are out, you know, got to surround the head coach, Butch Jones, the balls. They Come out in their burnt orange to 100 plus thousand at Neyland. Kentucky's first offensive possession takes two plays and it's boom. Boom Williams, 10 yard run, seven nothing cats. Joshua Dobbs though will tie it up for the balls in the next possession. Dobbs to the air, Josh Smith wide open. 24 yard touchdown, that was easy, seven to seven. Uh, Kentucky though kicks the field goal to make it 10-7. Uh, then it's Dobbs again getting it done on his feet. 35 yards, boing, gets pushed out of bounds, but then two plays later, Dobbs says, let me handle it. One yard touchdown, 14-10 balls after one quarter. Blow a kiss to the crowd. All right, Cats kick another field goal to start the second quarter. Then it's Dobbs again, goes back to the air to, oh, Ethan Wolf. 10 yard touchdown, 21-13 Tennessee, Kentucky quarterback Steven Johnson. Not as good of a day as Dobbs. That's because he just got sacked. Six yard loss, Corey Vereen there. Kentucky punts, it remains 21-13. Balls at the break. Second half now, 28-16. Alvin Kamara goes 17 yards for another UTTD, 35-16. Later in the third quarter, Johnson sacked by Derek Barnett this time. Sack number 30 on his resume of his career. Uh, fourth quarter now, Kamara back at it, takes the hand off. Get off me, bruh. Uh, uh, get off me, bruh. I say get off me, bruh. 29 yard touchdown balls win 49 36 in Knoxville gives Tennessee its 31st win out of the last 32 against the Cats. Kentucky drops to five and five on the season and will have to wait until this coming Saturday now to play Austin P to try to get that sixth win and become bowl eligible. Big day for Tennessee quarterback Joshua Dobbs. You saw him in the highlights. He accounted for five balls touchdowns. He's a very good football player. He's very talented and uh, he's a big guy that's very elusive. He's uh, deceptive. He, you know, he has great speed, but he has very good balance and uh, toughness. And uh, I'm glad we don't have to see him anymore. He's a senior, right? Get him out of here. Yeah. He's like a tight end playing quarterback, man. He was. It's hard to get him down. And when 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 he when, when he get in the zone, it's it's basically you can't stop. You know, they got a great leader at the quarterback position, and they got a good backfield. You know, I give a lot of respect to them boys. But, uh, man, I feel like we left a lot on the field, and I feel like it's a lot that we got to do to get better for next week. And next week, the Cats will host Austin P. at Commonwealth Stadium, as I mentioned, for Senior Day. And of course, they could get that sixth win. Georgetown looking to get a win on Chile. Senior Day out of G-Town, taking on U Pike, and the Tiger strike first, and Zach Harris gets in 7 nothing Tigers. However, U Pike would respond in the third. Bowen Smith, Austin Prey, where you at? Right here, bruh. The former Paris Central Commodore catches it. 22-yard touchdown. Ties it up at 7th. Game goes to overtime. And Demir Karapinzik would hit a 
four yard game winning field goal actually wouldn't go to overtime that was in regulation to get the 10 7 win you pike over number 17 georgetown but out of basketball the lmu rail splitter men's basketball team already won and known the season coming into yesterday and they were ranked second in the nation in division two basketball the splitters played their second game of the south atlantic conference versus conference carolina challenge at pioneer arena in greenville tennessee after a historic season last year coach josh shirts and he has several new guys he's working with on the roster. Uh, they're still number two in the nation, though. It's not what the start that LMU wanted. Jonathan Hunro to Chad Hicks there for the three ball. And then off the inbound, Lees McCray loses the handle, but regains it. And Dante falls. Hits the fall away jumper. Uh, but LMU gets things going. Chris Perry. Get out of here, bruh. Rudy Bib Bob Boyd. Good pass up to Dorian Pinson in transition. LMU led at the half 40 to 29, but Coach Schertz was not happy. Second half though, his team gonna make him happy. LMU comes out firing, Trevin Shaw makes the jumper there, then it's Laquan Choice. How's your three ball? That's not so good, but we got a guy who can get rebounds and put it in. His name's Chris Perry, 6'8 transfer from South Florida. He led the floor with 20 points. Laquan Choice though, he chooses a shot here, makes the three ball there. And then the exclamation point, Emmanuel Terry, go get it. LMU beats Lee's McCray 94-66, improving to 2-0 in the season. We're not experienced as last year, but everybody's buying in and everybody's starting to get a feel for each other, so it's coming along. And as far as the day, we had a lack of energy in the first half, but once we got on each other, we picked it up, and then we got the win that we needed. They were quicker to everything, tough to everything. We had 10 turnovers at halftime. Um, we were up 11, but, but they, were, they were the tougher, more aggressive more physical team the whole first half. We've got to be a blue collar team. You know, we don't shoot it as well as last year's team did. We're not going to score maybe as many points, although I think we scored 94 today. But we've got to be a team that hangs their hat on defense and rebounding and doing the tough stuff and offensive execution. I thought second half we got back to being kind of more of who we've been. The ball moved better. We only turned it over two times. Kevin Burton and the Union Bulldogs hosting Warren Wilson yesterday. One of four home games in the next 10 days for Union. Dominique Lindsay, he finds Sam Nat down low early. Nice turnaround float for two. And then Lindsay gets himself another assist. How about this? Gerard Newby to Lindsay. Uh, back to Newby. Oh, yeah. The alley oop there for the Bulldogs. Four point lead for Union. And this is what Union likes to do. They like to run, run, run. And then Newby riding your eye hole. Bye bang. Nice. Uh, man bun there, by the way. Off the inbounds, uh, Nat in the corner. His three ball looking real good early in the season. Nothing but Nat for the senior. Union rolls Warren Wilson to snap a three-game losing skid, 114-72. to All right, the Union women looking to start the season 4-0, taking on Bethel out of Indiana. Hi, Tim Curry. How's it going, man? A big game for senior Macy Spence. Three ball is real good. Six of eight from the field for Spence. Team high, 17 points. Off the steal now, Brianna Adler converts. Nice little Euro step right by you. A 16-point lead for Union. Pilots trying to keep pace. Camilla McGlynn, she buries the three ball in the corner. Then Union led by 12 at the break. Second half, nice dish off down low for Bethel to Savannah Blee. But watch as the, pi the Pilots are just, are they not being Pilots? They're just casually getting back on defense. And Lena White goes coast to coast for the bucket. Two of her 11. Union 4-0 to start the season. All four wins by double digits. 68-54 the final in this one. Here's Coach Tim Curry after the win. You can hear that on WYMT.com. Well, the basketball Cats tip their season off with a 23-point win over Stephen F. Austin on Friday night. Wing and Gabriel was one of three freshmen at double digits scoring for the Cats. Head coach John Calipari said after the game he watched a young team struggle on defense, specifically on the perimeter. A nice introduction, though, for point guard De'Aaron Fox, who broke the assist record in a Kentucky debut. Uh, I mean, it was cool uh, just getting my, I mean, it felt the same as the first two exhibitions. Uh, I mean, there's still games. Playing another, well, just playing another team is is better than playing ourselves all the time. So uh, I, felt, I felt good. That, that was a bunch of freshmen, and you could tell. We didn't defend. Um, you know, they, they shoot 44%, 45%, and we gave up some baskets. Um, I like the fact that we had 21 assists, 13 turns for the first game out of the gate. And that team denies wings. Cal has them denying passes, denying wings, which could lead to turnovers. And so we had 13, and four of them were uh, Isaiah Briscoe. So he and De'Aaron had seven of our 13, which is pretty good being that the other guys have six turnovers. And, of course, Kentucky will take on Canisius today at 
Rep Arena, that game is set for a 6 p.m. tip time. And if you're not going to Rep Arena, you can watch it on ESPN2. Of course, we'll have highlights tonight at 11. That's sports, and we'll be back. If you've been hurt on the job or suffered a disability and can no longer work, you need someone to fight for you. Whether it's workers' compensation or a social security disability claim, I know the system. Give me a call. I'll help you get the benefits you deserve. The consultation is free, and I don't get paid until you do. For a lawyer you can trust, call me now. Glenn Hammond, 606-437-7777. How do you see the world? Ha! At Shriners Hospitals for Children, we know that changing how you see things can turn them into... Everyday miracles! Like riding my bike. Breaking boards! Ha! Hugging my mom! Every day, for over 90 years, Shriners Hospitals for Children has been sending love to the rescue regardless of a family's ability to pay. If you know a child we can help, call or go online now. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. Eleven million people in the United States have macular degeneration. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. It used to be simple when I was young and couldn't figure things out. I asked for help. As I grew older, things got more complicated. Then I joined the military. I learned to carry my own weight and sometimes the weight of others. Now that I'm home, it seems hard to fit back in. Remember when you were young? Asking for help was simple. You don't have to do this alone at maketheconnection.net. to a cold start across the mountains this morning. We are still under a freeze warning that will expire here in about an hour and a half at 10 o'clock this morning. And temperatures still below freezing in many locations with temperatures ranging from the upper 20s to lower 30s across most of eastern Kentucky. Jackson, the warm spot at 35 degrees. We're also off to a dry start this morning with pinpoint Doppler showing those clean sweeps once again as we scan the skies which is not good news because we are under a severe drought here in eastern Kentucky and uh, some other locations in a moderate drought. But either way, we need the rain and we are just not going to get it today. Plenty of sunshine on tap as we go through the rest of your day. Those temperatures that started out in the 20s will eventually climb into the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees this afternoon. And there's more sunny and seasonable weather in the forecast for the rest of this week. I'll have the details on that coming up a little later. All right, thank you, Arden. Four Americans were killed yesterday in Afghanistan, among them two U.S. servicemen members and two contractors. Sixteen other American troops were also wounded. In a major breach of security, a suicide bomber blew themselves up inside the Bagram Airfield, the largest U.S. military base in Afghanistan. The Taliban claimed responsibility. Afghan officials believe the suicide bomber entered on foot and bypassed security by hiding among local Afghan staff members reporting for work. Once inside the base, he successfully detonated his explosives. The base has been attacked from the outside before, including a motorcycle bombing that killed six American soldiers last year. Bagram Air Base is America's main military post in Afghanistan and is home to most of the 8,500 American troops still in the country. Well, protesters were hitting the streets well into the night across the United States as President-elect Donald Trump vets possible cabinet members for his new administration. CBS's Roxana Sabiri has the latest from New York. This is the Portland Police Bureau. Police in riot gear were out in force to keep protesters from vandalizing in cities out west. From Los Angeles to New York. Protesters marched for a fourth day against the election of President-elect Donald Trump. 
he's racist, homophobic, sexist, not for the people, and we didn't want this. What do you say to those people who say this is the way the system works and Donald Trump won? I think it's time to change the system. The crowds ended up on Trump's doorstep and stayed into the night. Some of these protesters have been out here in front of Trump Tower for hours. They say they want Trump to look out his window, see them, and hear their voices. You kind of tell them, look, we're going to keep you in line. We're going to make sure you don't make any drastic decisions. And I'm a millennial, you know, it's our future. Also in the crowd, a few Trump supporters. Give him a chance, that's all I'm saying. In his first post-election interview, Trump told 60 Minutes he owes his victory partly to social media. The fact that I have such power in terms of numbers with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., I think it helped me win all of these races where they're spending much more money than I spent. And I won. Trump had no public events on Saturday, but he did tweet once saying, this will prove to be a great time in the lives of all Americans. We will unite and we will win. Roxana Saberi, CBS News, New York. The nationwide division surrounding this year's presidential election has shown up right here in Kentucky. While Trump easily won the bluegrass state, his opponent Hillary Clinton won the vote in Fayette and Jefferson counties. Last night, hundreds of protesters voiced their concerns about the president-elect holding signs like these. They say they feel misrepresented by the man America voted as their next president. Not my president. My fairness, my environment, my health care, my tolerance. Um, he doesn't represent any of those. And I think that Trump incites and enables people in their hatred. Trump sat down for an exclusive 60 Minutes interview, which will air tonight at 7 right here on WYMT. He has appeared on 60 Minutes nine times, but this is his first time since becoming president-elect. His famed wall, the media, and Muslims are only a few of the topics he will discuss with Leslie Stahl. His wife, Melania, sorry, Melania and most of his children will also make appearances. An Ohio judge declared a mistrial Saturday following days of deliberating in the case of a white former police officer charged with murder in the fatal shooting of an unarmed black motorist. Yasmin Amer reports. By reason of your inability to reach a verdict, I declare this case a mistrial. After jurors deliberated for more than 25 hours, a Hamilton County judge declared a mistrial in the case of former Ohio police officer Ray Tensing, accused of murdering Sam DeBose during a traffic stop in 2015. It wouldn't be long before demonstrators took to the streets in protest. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Tensing was an officer for the University of Cincinnati when he fatally shot DeBose. The shooting was recorded on Tensing's body cam. <laughs> Tensing testified on Tuesday that he pulled DeBose over for a missing license tag. The officer said he reached into the car to grab the car keys from the ignition, but was dragged by the arm after DeBose tried to take off, and that's when he reached up and shot him. Prosecutors argued Tensing wasn't being pulled by the car and did not need to open fire. Following news of the mistrial, Cincinnati Mayor John Cranley says he hopes the prosecutor will retry the case. This case is not over. Um, I think we've learned throughout this process how deeply Prosecutor Dieters feels about the case and about what is right and what is wrong. So I expect that he will look to continue to find a way to bring justice to this case. DeBose's family received a nearly $5 million settlement from the university, including undergraduate tuition for DeBose's children, a formal apology, and an on-campus memorial. Right, I'm Yasmin Amr, reporting. You may not need an attorney today, but when you do, be prepared. Watch Simply the Law, Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock on WYMT. When news breaks, always be in the know with WYMT on the go. Join us on your tablet or smartphone by going to WYMT.com or our app, powered by Appalachian Wireless. The men and women who served our country make a terrific asset to any business or workplace that hires them. In the military, they learn valuable skills and character values like leadership and integrity. So if you're an employer, please think of our service members when you're hiring and hire smart and bet on a bet. It's also a great way to thank them for the service. To learn more, call this number or visit saluteheroes.org. Thank you. And a mother, you don't want to have to worry about this bill is coming, but then she needs this chemo. That's a decision you shouldn't have to make. 
in St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all, not one bill. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. The treatment doesn't get any better than what you receive at St. Jude. It saved my life. It saved my daughter's life. It saved our family. Every year, tens of thousands of young people experience homelessness. If you or someone you know needs help, 1-800-RUNAWAY can provide support and connect you to the right resources. Together, we can end youth homelessness. Looking for a quick, healthy dinner idea? Eat at Mom's every day. Get the recipe of the day, budget with $10 or less meal ideas, and we even have ideas for the picky eaters in your family. The app is free. Just search for Mom's Every Day in the App Store or Google Play Store. WYMT Mountain News, dedicated to Eastern Kentucky. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Cassidy Strickland. Today is Sunday, November 13th. I'd like to check in with meteorologist Arden Gregory for a look at your forecast this morning. A little chilly and it's going to be sunny today, but will it warm it up for us? It will actually. We started out very cold this morning, but we're actually going to end warmer than we did yesterday. We are still under a freeze warning this morning. That expires here in about an hour and a half at 10 a.m. But temperature wise, we are still very chilly across the mountains with those temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s across most of eastern Kentucky. Jackson is the warm spot at 35 degrees right now and Jackson showing or wise rather showing a temperature of 43. We're also off to a dry start this morning with pinpoint Doppler showing another morning of those clean sweeps over eastern Kentucky. That is not good news because we are under a severe drought right now while much of the rest of Kentucky is under a moderate drought. Either way we need the rain and we are just not going to get it not today anyway temperatures will climb into the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees this afternoon, but it will be sunny and dry all day long. And there's a lot more dry weather in the forecast, but there are finally some rain chances in view. I'll have the details on that coming up a little later. All right, thank you, Arden. Forest fires are plaguing the region just as open season kicks off for deer hunting, bringing several hunters into the woods. A burn ban remains in effect for most of eastern Kentucky, and with no rain in sight, the threat of fires continues to grow. Officials say hunters need to be vigilant when in the woods. They say you shouldn't go into any areas where smoke is present, and if you are smoking, they say it's important to properly dispose your cigarette. And if you're a cigarette smoker, please be extra careful with your cigarette butts. One idea is to take your, take your butts, drown them in a bottle of water, and this ensures that we don't have any fires that are started because of cigarette smoking. Nearly 20 uncontrolled fires are burning in southeastern Kentucky. Flames have burned more than 17,000 acres. If you see anyone burning outside, call police immediately. Officials in Wolf County are working a forest fire near Tunnel Ridge Road. They say even though you may be able to see the flames near the Mountain Parkway, the fire is contained. U.S. Forest Service officials asked drivers not to call into 911 about this fire because they already know about it. They say the calls are clogging up their local dispatch centers. Crews in Ashland responded to a house fire yesterday morning. It happened around 9.30 a.m. On a home, at a home on Roberts Drive. Firefighters say an older man lives in the house. They say he got out just in time when a stranger driving by knocked on his door to tell him his house was on fire. While we are told the home is damaged, officials say it can be repaired. They believe it was an electrical fire. Most of the damage was in the attic. The city of Ashland is trying to cut down on panhandling by changing a local solicitation ordinance. The newly published ordinance makes it illegal for someone to ask for money while standing in the street or on a median. There is a similar ordinance in Huntington, West Virginia, but law experts say it's hard to enforce such things. Now business owners are telling us how they feel about it. A lot of the times you do see them heading straight to the liquor store, so... I would, let's clean it up, let's, let's get it going again. 
On Thursday, police say they saw a man panhandling on the side of the street and arrested him hours later for trafficking in a controlled substance. The city of Paintsville will soon have a new mayor. Current Mayor Bob Porter submitted his resignation letter last month. This comes after a federal jury convicted him of theft of federal funds and bribery. Today is Porter's last day. The city expects to name an interim mayor tomorrow evening. The yesterday family gathered in Richmond to send off Kentucky soldiers heading overseas. 26 soldiers from Kentucky are heading to Texas as they get ready to deploy. Family members packed the Armed Forces Reserve Center for yesterday's departure ceremony, something they consider a proper send-off. There's never a good time to deploy. You know, they're in different parts of their life, whether it's a high school graduation, a college graduation, a birthday, an anniversary. You're going to miss something. That team will spend a few weeks training at Fort Hood before they head overseas. Well, people across the nation are honoring veterans this weekend for their service and sacrifice. While Friday marked the national holiday, the Disabled American Veterans Chapter in Laurel County held a service yesterday in honor of those men and women. As WYMT's Krista Frost found out, the chapter faces an issue they hope will soon be fixed. It is the sound of great respect, honoring those who fought for freedom. Every veteran in the United States, regardless of when they served, which war they were in, which unit they were in, which branch of service they were in, is bonded to the other veterans. It is a bond that will never be broken, despite the fact some say they've seen a great loss. I remember uh, once we had three funerals the same day. At the Disabled American Veterans Chapter in Laurel County, leaders hope more veterans will join their honor guard. Some say they are stretched thin, which makes their job helping other vets even more difficult. Not all of our chapters have honor guards, uh, maybe three, and uh, that hurts. So sometimes we end up in another chapter doing funerals. Their families, if they need help, they're, we're here to help them as they honor those who served, hoping others will be inspired to give back to those who have already gave so much. In Laurel County, Krista Frost, WYMT Mountain News. If you are interested in joining the Honor Guard, you can visit our website, WYMT.com, where we provided a link to more information. Well, Christmas came early for some children living in Pulaski, Wayne, and Casey counties. The Keeping It Moving organization donated more than 1,000 bicycles to children. Officers from various counties and Kentucky State Troopers attended the event to help children pick out their perfect bike. Organizers say they hope this will create a positive relationship between kids and police officers. We wanted to build a relationship between first responders and kids because, unfortunately, uh, law enforcement has a uh, kind of a bad rap right now. So we want to try to create a relationship between the child and the officer. Organizers say they plan on holding the event again next year. Paperwork needs to be filed in advance for bikes to be given away. Well, coming up on Mountain News this morning, a big change in the way many of us will watch videos on our phone next year. And a well-known retailer prepares to close almost all of its stores. And between the freeze warning, forest fires, and a supermoon, weather is playing a big role in eastern Kentucky this weekend. Stay with us. I'll have your full forecast when we come back. Blended leather sofa and love seat just eight ninety nine to get the matching recliner free. It's Big Sandy's Veterans Weekend Sale. Fifty five inch Ultra HD LED TV three forty nine. Ask about our military discount plus up to five hundred dollars in cash reward through Tuesday at Big Sandy. Winter mornings, famous for commuting. Lee's, famous for chicken. Take home style home this holiday season at Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with our famous chicken pot pie for only $4.99. If comfort food is what you're craving, we've got you covered. Our chicken pot pie comes stuffed with savory chicken, carrots, peas, and potatoes, all in a creamy sauce. Get another reason to love the holiday season at Lee's with our famous chicken pot pie for only $4.99. Only at Lee's, famous for chicken. These are tough times. Many are working harder and longer just to survive. And an injury makes it that much harder. I'll work just as hard to ensure you don't just get what you need, but what you deserve. Because life shouldn't just be survived, but lived. Call me for your injury, social security, and workers' comp case needs. The consultation is free, and I don't receive a penny until you get paid. 
For a lawyer you can trust, call me now, Glenn Hammond. Looking for a quick, healthy dinner idea? Eat at Mom's every day. Get the recipe of the day, budget with $10 or less meal ideas, and we even have ideas for the picky eaters in your family. The app is free. Just search for Mom's Every Day in the App Store or Google Play Store. Follow WYMT on Twitter for the latest news, weather, and sports. Can a mattress keep you cool? These can. Experience the cooling action of the Serta Eye Comfort and Temper Breeze collections for just $35 a month. Add two pillows and a mattress protector and get a 55-inch LED TV free. Big Sandy Superstore, bigger, better. When you see news happening, dial star 57 or text your news tip to 5757. Service is provided by Appalachian Wireless. Better service, bigger saving. Good morning and happy Sunday. Thank you for waking up with us. It's a little chilly outside, but of course the big story continues to be that dry weather. Yes, we haven't had nearly as much rain as we normally do so far this season, and we are in desperate need of some. We are under a drought. Most of eastern Kentucky is currently under a severe drought, while much of the rest of the state is under a moderate drought at this time. We have a lot of forest fires burning. We really need some rain, but Pinpoint Doppler showing another round of clean sweeps over eastern Kentucky this morning. No rain in sight today. But we are off to a rather cold start this morning with temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s across much of eastern Kentucky. Some locations just beginning to break into the mid 30s now. And we are still under a freeze warning. That encompasses all of eastern Kentucky and will expire at 10 a.m. So as you head out the door this morning, grab that coat because we are off to a very chilly start this morning and you might want to give yourself a little extra time to scrape the frost off the windshield. I know many folks have already had to do that this morning. As we go through the rest of your day, we'll see those temperatures top out in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees under ample sunshine, hardly a cloud in the sky. Let's go ahead and break that down. Nice clear skies over eastern Kentucky this morning. It will stay that way as we head into the afternoon hours with those temperatures topping out in the upper 50s to right around 60. Then as we head into the evening, and through the overnight hours, we're going to keep with those clear skies. Again, hardly a cloud in the sky. And tonight will not be nearly as cold as last night. We will start your Monday off with temperatures right around or just above freezing. Now, all this clear weather is bad news for the forest fires. We really do need some rain. Our wildfire threat does remain very high because we are very dry right now. But the good news for all this clear weather is that it will make for nice viewing of the the super moon. This will be the closest full moon we've had since 1948. It will be about 14% bigger and 30% brighter than a normal full moon. And tonight and tomorrow night will be the two best nights for viewing that here in eastern Kentucky. As far as the rest of the week is concerned, very seasonable through the first half of the week with those temperatures in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees. We will see a few more clouds Tuesday and Wednesday as a front moves through east Eastern Kentucky, but it will be a weak front and we are expected to stay dry. As we head into the second half of the week, that's where we're going to see some warmer temperatures with highs in the mid 60s on Thursday, upper 60s on Friday, but also on Friday, we're going to see the cloud cover increase as we go through the day and a cold front approaches eastern Kentucky. That front will move through on Saturday and when it does, it is going to finally bring us some rain chances. So let's all hope that that's a good soaking rain that can help with some of this dry weather and forest fires. Now don't forget, Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $73 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $293 million. You're watching Mountain News This Morning right here on WYMT. We know what matters to you, whether it's in your hometown or in the nation's capital. Reporting from Washington. Reporting at the White House. Reporting at the Supreme Court. I'm Washington Bureau Chief Jacqueline Paula Castro, WYMT Mountain News. We're bringing your lawmakers to you. We are the only news organization in Eastern Kentucky with a bureau in Washington, D.C., covering our lawmakers and our issues. Another reason why WYMT is dedicated to Eastern Kentucky.
tube birth defect, and it happens within the first 28 days of pregnancy before you even know you're pregnant. Basically, the baby's spine does not close all the way in development. Every girl, childbearing age, should be taking a multivitamin with 400 micrograms of folic acid in it. It reduces your risk up to 70%. That's huge. Search has drastically improved over the years, making business lookups specific to locale. If you have your business's website, social media, and local directories properly set up, you put yourself at a huge advantage in your market, an advantage you can capitalize on with LocalX. LocalX is a full-service digital agency dedicated to local business. Together, we will maximize the growth of your organization in your community. LocalX, your local digital marketing experts. Go online at localxmarketing.com. A big change in the way many of us will watch videos on our phone next year, and a well-known retailer prepares to close almost all its stores. CBS's Brooke Silverbraga has those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. Watching video on your phone won't gobble up as much data next year. If you're an AT&T user, the videos also won't look as good. The cell phone provider is introducing Stream Saver, which will by default play lower bandwidth videos when they're available. Users who want full HD will be able to disable the function. Stocks ticked up again Friday. The Dow had its best week in nearly five years, closing at a record high after gaining 39 points. The Nasdaq added 28. Kenneth Cole is closing almost all its stores. The retailer's 63 U.S. outlet stores will shutter in the next six months, leaving just two full-price stores open. The company says it will focus on international stores and online sales. And Instagram is reportedly testing a live video feature to compete with YouTube, Snapchat, and others. Their CEO told the Financial Times the photo sharing platform will soon let you stream video to the world or just your friends in real time. Go Insta has so far been tested in Russia. No word when it will go live in the U.S. And that's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Brooke Silverbrack. With Black Friday less than two weeks away, retail giants Walmart, Target and Best Buy are rolling out their plans. Walmart and Target will open their doors at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving Day, and Best Buy stores will open an hour earlier at 5 p.m. Best Buy will also close at 1 Friday morning and reopen at 8 a.m. All three major retailers are also announcing expanded plans for digital and in-store deals. And if you haven't bought Nintendo's NES Classic yet, you could be out of luck already because they're in short supply. Nintendo just released the throwback version Friday for $60, and it's already sold out on Amazon, Best Buy, or excuse me, Best Buy, GameStop, and Target are only selling the NES Classic in stores. If you really want the gaming system, sellers on eBay are offering them for a cool $1,000. Advertisers on Facebook will no longer be able to choose the race or ethnicity of the people they market certain products to. What Facebook calls ethnic affinity marketing is being disabled for ads offering housing, employment, or credit. Critics said the tool allowed advertisers to avoid offering products and services to minority groups. Well, the markets have fluctuated a lot over the past few weeks due to the presidential election, but now that Donald Trump has won, you may be wondering what to do with your retirement account. Jill Schlechinger has the answer. Investors have been on a roller coaster over the past few weeks that seems to have gone up and down in lockstep with the polls. Now that Donald Trump has won the presidency, you may be wondering, what should I do with my retirement account? The answer for long-term investors is clear, absolutely nothing. Unexpected events can create market volatility, both to the upside and the downside, which can lure you into feeling like you should do something. Try to resist that urge by reminding yourself that you're not investing for the next four weeks, four months, or even four years. You're trying to build your nest egg to last for decades in the future. And even if you are planning on retiring at the end of this year, you aren't likely to pull out all of your money from your account at once. In other words, you're not investing to retirement, rather you're investing through retirement. That's why you created a diversified portfolio based on your goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. Over the long term, it's a strategy that works. Yes, the unknown is scary and can lead to market volatility, but you have to refrain from being reactive to short-term market conditions. 
It's not easy to do, but sometimes the best action is no action. In New York, I'm Jill Schlesinger. The 2016 Nissan Rogue. An IIHS top safety pick with intuitive all-wheel drive. Take on any road in Nissan Rogue, Murano, and Pathfinder with intuitive all-wheel drive. Hurry, Black Friday offers start now. Get 0% financing for up to 72 months or a low $189 per month lease on the 2016 Rogue. For 25 years, you've made Appalachian Wireless what it is today. And as a thank you, we're giving you something unprecedented. More data. data. All mix and match and Advantage Plan subscribers have had their data packages automatically increased significantly, permanently, for no extra charge. To see just how much data you got, stop by a store, call customer service, or visit our website for more information. Just another example of better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Looking for a quick, healthy dinner idea? Eat at Mom's every day. Get the recipe of the day, budget with $10 or less meal ideas, and we even have ideas for the picky eaters in your family. The app is free. Just search for Mom's Every Day in the App Store or Google Play Store. On any given day, anything can happen. That's the beauty of morning television. This is your eye-opener to this day. CBS This Morning, weekdays. WYMT Mountain News, dedicated to Eastern Kentucky. Closed captioning presented by Wolf Williams and Reynolds, serving Eastern Kentucky for Social Security and Federal Black Lung. It's an event you and your family don't want to miss. Tonight and tomorrow night, you will have an opportunity to see the biggest and brightest so-called supermoon. Meteorologist Jason Lindsay explains what makes the full beaver moon so special. It hasn't happened in more than 60 years. It won't happen again for another 18. So it is a fairly rare event. The event, a super moon. We get a moon that's brighter than normal and appears larger than normal. Robert Milner oversees the Golden Pond Planetarium at Land Between the Lakes. I'm kind of calling it a super duper moon. And here's why the moon will appear up to 14% bigger and 30% brighter. The moon gets closer to the Earth sometimes and is farther away sometimes. When it's close, we call that perigee. Now, sometimes that occurs at the same time as the full moon. And when that happens, we get a supermoon. One that could even appear orange or red in color. If you catch it on the horizons, of course, either rising or setting, it could have a very red color to it. So if Mother Nature cooperates, it's a sky show you don't want to miss. At Land Between the Lakes, I'm Jason Lindsay. That's pretty cool. I'm excited to see that, but do you know why they call it a full beaver moon? <laughs> I do, actually. I did call it that here just a few minutes ago, and it's usually in November, and it was always around this time. That was the best time to go out and hunt for beavers so that you would have warm fur for the winter time. So that's where it originally oh. got that name. But we should have fairly nice weather for viewing the super moon. We will be mostly clear tonight and tomorrow night with temperatures in the upper 30s to right around 40 degrees. Sunday night and Monday night will be the best nights for viewing that. And as far as the rest of the week is concerned, we have fairly seasonable weather through midweek with temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s. And then we'll finally get some rain chances in the forecast as we head into next weekend for your Saturday. Yeah. Yes, definitely keeping our fingers crossed for that rain. Yes. Well, that's going to do it for us this morning, but don't forget you can always find news and weather updates all day long on our website, WYMT.com. We'll see you back here at 6 and 11. Have a great Sunday. Sky Alert Weather, dedicated to Eastern Kentucky.